welcome you all back to our broadcasting live from our bioclimatic paradise here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And the show that looks at the equilibrium uh, between the brilliance of the bioclimatic natural environment and the built environment. And today is going to be the last show of this year. So we're going to look at this nature of that beast in a little bit more literal way than already anyways. And so we have a very, very uh, suiting guest uh, who is uh, Professor uh, Emeritus Hans Kroc. Hi, Hans. Hi, how are you? I'm good. good. Especially since you're here, we're going to have a great time Good to talk about um, the uh, tr what I call tropic hearing, and maybe we can bring up the first slide here. And uh, so I should have introduced myself and in saying I'm your host, uh, Diplom Ingenieur Architect Martin Despang, because I have one of these old degrees before we adopted the Bachelor and Master that recognizes the engineering in the architectural education. Mm -hmm. And at the very beginning of my career, we had the chance with our firm to work together with Over Arab who is quoted here in the back that actually good design is both, right, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, um, while uh, OVA is actually from where we are originally from, mm -hmm. half around the world and Northern Europe, and uh, you always saying you're a nomad for all your life, right, mm -hmm. have been and probably will always be. Yeah. But um, we should probably have you speak a little bit of Polish because that's your most origin, right? So why don't yeah. you say a sentence in Polish? Jeszcze Polska nie zginęła. All right. And when I now continue to talk German, when ich hier Deutsch weiterspreche, then you can understand me as well because yeah, you spend some... Yeah, Deutsch. There you go. So <laughs> a man of many languages and a many, man of many other skills as we will see here. So um, the sort of the Hawaiian over is a gentleman that you had been a partner with for many years. And if we can get up the next slide here, we've been running across him here in some recent shows with Ronald Lindgren and DeSoto Brown. This one is a project uh, on Seaside Avenue, it was a Seaside Hotel that actually uh, this gentleman uh, teamed up with the architect at Killingsworth and they were partners in crime developing this project. And next slide is actually the more, uh, the most known, the most famous, uh, I guess, project, uh, these architect uh, Killingsworth and, and, and uh, the engineer collaborated on, that's the Kahala Hilton Hotel. Mm -hmm. And at the very bottom, I, I picked uh, this picture from the website of that gentleman. Unfortunately, that website is not around anymore. So, uh, but I took the picture on the left when I had a chance to meet that gentleman once only, unfortunately, you go to the next slide and this is a picture of his pictures on the wall in his office. And this is that gentleman, and please tell us who that dear friend and business partner of yours was. Yes, he, he was, a, a, in fact, a dear friend uh, and a business partner. His name is Alfred Yee. Uh, he was, um, in my view, uh, the most prominent engineer that Hawaii has ever produced. And uh, he's responsible for uh, a lot of innovations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we became... Uh, uh, partners uh, uh, in in designing and uh, uh, presenting uh, the design of OTEC uh, floating platforms, mm -hmm. and he was responsible for the platform portion, and I was responsible for the OTEC ocean thermal Absolutely. energy conversion portion. And let's before and that's one of the projects up on the wall. But let's just before that walk quickly through some architectural engineering projects that he did and. On the top right is uh, he gave a talk story at Doko Momo um, in 2013. I wasn't able to be there, so I had a chance to meet him actually in 16, a year before he passed away in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in 17. So next slide here is uh, Vladimir Asipov's IBM building that we all know um, from um, uh, the early 60s, 1962. Next slide. Um, and he also has significant impact and, and fame within um, the uh, innovation of concrete technology. Here, his screen in his office back then and him giving me a slideshow. And these two gentlemen here have been collaborating with him. This is uh, Les and Adam Campers out from Great Pacific Rocky Mountain Precast. And so they have been partnering in next slide. This is just one example. There is this um, uh, splice sleeve that L uh, invented that allows the concrete 
prefab to be way more efficient and effective. And here he is on the right, he's sharing less, is sharing it with the students, with the emerging generation. That, uh, and to the left is, is less campers and, and L. And the next slide is that I also had a chance to go there with a project of ours. And it was very nervous, him being the mm -hmm. master, as you correctly called him. And he basically mm -hmm. said, Martin, structurally, we figure this out. No, no brainer. But I want to talk about this building because it seems to be alive and it lives. And it reminds me of next slide, a project he has done here, again, early 60s, 64 Queen Emma Gardens. And then four years later, next slide, uh, 1315 Elamwana Boulevard was basically um, constructed. So uh, uh, next slide. Uh, this is the Alamoana Hotel built in 70, and I think you guys met in the early 70s, right? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you said? Right. So around right. that time, mm -hmm. we allowed ourselves to position our building proposal Primitiva next to the Alamoana Hotel for the proletarians and the people working in the mall. And this uh, hotel was actually for quite a while the tallest concrete structure in the United States. Uh, next slide. Uh, later in the 70s, here the Frank Fazi building, also we suggested to put a Primitiva tower next into that whole big donut hole in the parking. So these are the architectural projects and, and many more. We show a few more, but now we want to jump to your guys' collaboration and we want to kick off with a fairly, well, while talking to Jay in the, before the show, it's been dragging along. It's in the cooking for a while, but it has been in the news. Uh, uh, fairly recently, so to speak, next a picture, and please explain us quickly what that is. Hans. Uh, well, this is an auditorium. This is a, uh, an idea that Al and I uh, uh, had, and that is to uh, restore uh, the swimmable uh, with clean water this time uh, uh, an auditorium. And the key element is that we would uh, involve the incoming waves to push uh, the water through the uh, natatorium basin so that it would not, not linger there and uh, become uh, uh, turbid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, would use alleys, especially in concrete design, so that it would last a long time and stand up to, uh, to the waves and the uh, salt water. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's uh, still to be built. <laughs> it should be, as we're talking. And for the audience who are not familiar, at the top left, I found a historic picture. I mean, this, is, this has been around when, when that area hadn't even been developed, right? So this mm -hmm. is an original. And then if you want to know more in detail, there's a show that we reference at the top right that you did with Jay. So you guys, please go back and find out all the whistles and bells of, once again, a very kind of genius project. And the next slide is going to be, uh, while the previous projects were with quite some famous architects, actually, Queen Emma Gardens in 1350 was with, with Yamazaki, the World Trade Tower, Twin Tower architects, among many other things. And the hotel, Alamoana Hotel, was with John Graham, who built the Space Needle for the, um, mm -hmm. the World Fair in Seattle. And here is uh, uh, an equally famous architect, I.M. Pei, who had just been passing away not that long ago in the... Um, age of in the early in the hundreds and um, this project they've been working on um, in the early 60s and that's actually where we first met and next slide is going to be uh, at the bottom left you see me taking a picture of you from the back of you where we're, you were in the audience and this was the German uh, Hawaii clean energy symposium actually the second one and I have to moderate a panel, and then uh, you were raising your arm and saying something about old tech, and I uh, literally and figuratively speaking saw this wave going through the audience. It seems more like a tsunami because it seemed to like challenge some people who seem to be stuck on other renewable things. So I mm -hmm. found this uh, uh, very interesting. So let's jump basically into the gist of that and go to the next slide and explain, uh, explain to us on this sort of geographic uh, diagram here, um, sort of the, the, yeah, the broad idea sure. of OTEC. Yeah, OTEC uh, is, is an old idea. It was first uh, thought of in 1881, mm -hmm. which is uh, by, by a Frenchman. But uh, in its current uh, evaluation, it would encompass uh, the entire tropical zone mm -hmm. and has uh, the possibility 
of being able to supply all of humankind's energy uh, in uh, perpetuity, mm -hmm. which is something very big to say, you know. Absolutely. And at the same time, it has a capability of reversing global warming. Wow, we need that too. And, and, uh, and you know, rid us of all the problems that are associated with fossil fuel, mm -hmm. uh, social problems included, uh, fighting wars over limited resource, mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 and, and uh, all the pollution uh, in the air, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also uh, with uh, respect to oil spills and, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, all kinds of other dangers that are associated mm -hmm. with, it, with it. But OTEC is, uh, is, is an area that uh, has been developed largely in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 other people are involved, of course, the Japanese and uh, the Europeans and uh, uh, the Chinese even. Uh, uh, who, they invited me one time uh, uh, to uh, make a presentation in uh, mm -hmm in China to yeah. their uh, 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 specialty people. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a global yeah, uh, uh, solution to a global problem. Yeah. And, this, and Hawaii is the yeah. leader in that. And that's so. why Hawaii is here on the map. And the map pretty much shows the, as you explained to me, the equatorial belt, mm. where the differential in temperature between the very cold water very down there and mm. the very top water is extreme enough. Though, so it's more efi most efficient and effective. And it says here we have uh, sort of 21 degrees in, in Hawaii at the and then there is a place that's even better that has yes. 24 degrees, and that's the Marshall Islands. And tell us a little bit about how far you got there, very yes. far. Uh, the Marshall Islands uh, are a set of atolls, of course, mm -hmm. and they are very low. And recently, uh, we've had stories of uh, uh, sea level rise uh, causing overwash uh, of uh, some of the inhabited islands. and. Uh, uh, they, they've had lots of problems in the past, of course, with atomic testing mm -hmm. and, and other uh, things. And we uh, had a project together with the Marshall Islands mm -hmm. to uh, build uh, the first commercial scale mm -hmm. uh, OTEC facility mm -hmm. there. And we went all the way to uh, 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 being on the verge of uh, signing a power purchase agreement. Yeah, yeah. And uh, having a finalized uh, uh, design uh, uh, with, with approval uh, from yeah. the Pentagon, it yeah. was going yeah. to uh, be uh, uh, something that uh, the uh, U.S. Army would buy uh, the electricity, mm -hmm. and we would also supply fresh water and hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, uh, from the same facility, mm -hmm. and we had uh, participation of the Japanese and the Europeans mm -hmm. and uh, various other companies, uh, uh, both in the U.S. and uh, all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we were quite far along in that. And then, and unfortunately, then, the leader passed away, so did yes. L. And so we're happy to have you around, and all pressure yeah. is on you now. Yeah, and well, some of your partners we want to And I'm about. crumbling under the pressure here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> now you're, you're holding on well. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. And this, again, a picture I took of the picture on L's wall, because besides all the more architectural, uh, this is architectural too, but in the ocean. So tell us again what yes. that is, what floats there. And, Yes, what it this, does. this is uh, uh, taking advantage of Ali's expertise in, uh, in uh, concrete structures. And this is a 125 megawatt mm -hmm. size OTEC uh, mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's modular, and there are, uh, there are four uh, modules in there, each one of them 25 megawatts. Actually, mm -hmm. there are five uh, modules, uh, uh, one of them a spare, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, designed and uh, evaluated uh, in up to 60 uh, feet waves mm -hmm. and was able to withstand that kind of facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it uh, uh, is uh, uh, a design that's similar. Uh, the last project that uh, Al participated in uh, was a, a dry dock, a floating dry mm -hmm. dock. Uh, that was built in, in Indonesia, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, that's uh, located now at, in the Bowers Point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Harbor yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. And talking in the harbor, let's go to the next slide. Because uh, Al had already made himself a name um, a decade before that uh, with this project here, with the floating uh, USS uh, Arizona Memorial. Right. And he did this together. This is a very popular project. Obviously, many tourists who come here see it. There's also these handsome gentlemen, my youngest son, Lenny, up there, and Elvis here, who was fundraising for it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that is floating. Uh, and, and, you know, um, uh, Alfred uh, Price has actually, you know, shares kind yes. of a tragic background with you having been pushed around quite a lot over there in the old world, unfortunately, because of us Germans. So yes. maybe you want to share that a little bit? Well, uh, yeah, that, that was an interesting story. A discussion I had with Alfred Price was, uh, he told me the story of when he first came from Austria mm -hmm. to the U.S. and uh, he ended up, for reasons I don't really quite understand, he ended up here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the first things that happened to him after uh, December 7th mm -hmm. uh, uh, was that he was taken prisoner because he came from Austria and he spoke German. <laughs> And he choice. was actually, ha he had a Jewish background. Yeah. And so they put him in a camp in, in, in the Sand Island. And so he said it wasn't too bad, though, because uh, a lot of the other prisoners were uh, German chefs from Waikiki. And so <laughs> they were able to make do with uh, what they had. Like rats, and, and, said, Yeah, they so. did, did cook up some rats. So, oh, nice. Right. <laughs> That's a funny, funny story. So let's go to the next slide because, um, and if, you know, we have to apologize if people who have never heard of uh, OTEC, it's ocean uh, thermal yes, ocean energy therm conversion, right? That's, that's correct. And, uh, and as you mentioned, it's a simple heat engine. Uh, which takes uh, the surface uh, water, which is heated by the sun, mm -hmm. and uh, and uses the cold deep water yeah, yeah. to run run a mm -hmm. simple uh, engine, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, anybody who's taken thermodynamics 101 yeah. sees on page one. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's it's not a big mystery as, as how it works. Yeah, no. uh, but but and it's worked. Uh, every time the first installation was actually yeah. in the 1920s in mm -hmm. Cuba. Yeah. Uh, wow. And so it's not a uh, esoteric kind mm -hmm. of technology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the main deal is that it's big. Yeah. Because the difference in temperature is yeah. not very big. No. And so you have to pump a lot of yeah. water through heat exchangers. And, That's primarily and, and it. And talking big uh, is also that uh, some people actually, you know, general public and probably because the terminology is oddly too close, but there's also OPEC, which mm. is the Organization of Petroleum yes. Exporting Countries. Which is and completely opposite. Of exactly, OPEC. that's yes. the irony of it. And, yeah. and L actually had made himself a name already within them and proven that he's not just yes. a weird nuts guy, that he yes. actually is very, uh, you know, profitable for them. And this yes. is, uh, happens around this project. Can you explain yes. this to us? Yes, and this is, this is Al's uh, design for a uh, uh, oil exploration platform, mm -hmm. uh, which was built in Japan mm -hmm. uh, uh, by a specialty mix concrete that Al uh, developed and using technology that he, he developed, a honeycomb structure, yeah. which is the strongest uh, 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 design uh, using the least amount of material. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was able to do this and it was built in uh, four months mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Japan mm -hmm. by Shimizu, mm -hmm. and then towed up uh, to uh, 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 off Alaska yeah. and used to explore for the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all of the uh, uh, areas there to see how much oil was available offshore. But now it made it above and beyond yes. the U.S. And, right? and its its uh, virtue is that it, uh, it, it is extremely durable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it didn't crack or spall like a lot of concrete mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. and was able to withstand all of the pressure from the ice, as mm -hmm. is shown mm -hmm. in the, this, mm -hmm. uh, this picture, mm -hmm. and has lasted for more than 30 years without having to be dry docked yeah. or having any kind of damage whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's uh, it's been used by the Russians. Mm -hmm. It is, in fact, 
Putin's most productive platform. Oh wow! And uh, is uh, still in use. Yeah, yeah. There you and go. And so it's that same design yeah, yeah. that we would use for an OTEC platform. Yeah, yeah. So we consider this technology mm -hmm. well proven. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so, uh, yeah. No. And again, uh, next slide, uh, which is a compilation of a couple of shows. You've done done one with uh, uh, with Stan. Um, the but, Energy Man, and uh, then Ethan Allen, and then you did um, several other ones which are referred down here. So um, uh, go to the next slide. Uh, DeSoto Brown has pitched uh, that there is a tradition of innovations on the island, and he's talking basically post-contact. And so he sees yourself uh, in line with that, with that tradition, right in line with that. And, and we're saying, you know, uh, almost no other place is is basically better prepared to mm -hmm. be, and of course you within your your work in the in the academia and the fellow academia have been heavily involved in that at the university mm -hmm. and been working on grants, right? But there's also an irony to that when mm -hmm. at a certain point that wasn't cutting it anymore, right? Share yeah. That, well, uh, we. Uh... Uh, this was uh, the reason that the Natural Energy Laboratory on, in Kona was developed, mm -hmm. was to explore mm -hmm. OTEC. And it did a very good job, mm -hmm. uh, so much so that uh, at the end of uh, the 1980s, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, uh, the, uh, the report was presented as to what the results were. Mm -hmm. And the, the Department of Energy said, hallelujah, you've, you've solved all the problems mm -hmm. and this is ready for commercial development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so no more research money is going to mm -hmm. be needed mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. And so all the research money stopped. Mm -hmm. And then all of the people that were working on this, uh, Lockheed and uh, all kinds of other yeah, companies, yeah. Yeah. and even the University of Hawaii, uh, except, out. yeah, they dropped out. They quit because there wasn't any more research money. Wow, wow. And there was only one professor mm -hmm. and one engineer outside here. I think namely, we know that one. I, me <laughs> and Al Yi yeah, yeah. that, uh, that stuck around yeah. and, and then continued the development. Yeah. And that's where we came up with these improvements. Yeah. There, there were indeed improvements over mm -hmm. what we had at that time. Absolutely. And so, the, and then we yeah, presented yeah. proposals yeah, yeah, for yeah. Uh, Diego Garcia, an yeah. island in the Indian yeah. Ocean, and uh, and then also uh, yeah. more recently yeah. for uh, for uh, um, uh, 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 Kwajalein yeah, in the yeah. Marshall Islands. And if the camera could go to back to studio for one second here, this is this impressive compendium here uh, that is 176 pages thick. Yes. And that it, it's all comprised, it has everything. It yes. has obviously yes. the technological viability, but it also has the economical viability, yes. right? It's, it, uh, uh, and the, the challenge was to uh, beat the present. Uh, yeah. Cost yeah. of the uh, of the diesel generators in yeah. in Kwajalein, and yeah. we we did that yeah, handily, yeah. and uh, we're on the verge of uh, of signing a power purchase agreement, and uh, yeah. with that, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had several funding agencies that were willing to go mm -hmm. in for this, yeah. and uh, then uh, several things happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of which is that we had a change in administration, <laughs> at, uh, in upper administration, at, yeah, in, very at, up. uh, in the <laughs> presidency, yeah. who no longer believed in such things as global warming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatnot. Let's go to the next slide <laughs> here, and you know this is reflected also in some environmental impact statements here. And over coffee talk, you know, I played the devil's advocate and asked you these things as what they say, you know, it puts out nutrients and the water has a different temperature. And you were able to basically um, prove, at least to me and in this compendium here, to mm. everyone else that, you know, these are not problems. This is all, no. it's pretty much a really good package and a really good deal. So uh, let's jump to the next slide here because we're getting closer to the end of the story. And uh, there's a gentleman here in, in, at, the, at the orange podium here um, who is, uh, because you're obviously now eager, I mean, you have impacted um, many, many um, of the future generation to take this yes. over in strategic positions in countries all over the world. 
Right. And one of them, luckily, is in my home country, and that's Dominic Herle here. So, hi, yes. Dominic. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Dominic is basically looking at Heidi Klum here, and I made him do that because he wasn't really looking at her. I did this graphically. <laughs> but I wanted to share that, you know, when you said certain things happened, and this is pretty much, this makes so much sense. And you said, you know, if we could only reverse this tragic era in history not that long ago mm -hmm. that Gottfried Daimler had pretty much invented more or less an electric car but then Ford and Rockefeller took over and were going for oil right That's and right. now is the point to reverse that and I yes. think we want to basically make a pitch here to do this and not just by logic but also by sexiness and I created this term for myself when I'm building off the grid buildings back in Germany I created the term the Heidi Klumization of Birkenstock architecture and we have to say here obviously it would be the the poly Jesus sizeization of something, right? But what we're saying, we need to get this more exciting. And uh, there's also two cars there. One is a car of my, my oldest son, Joey, here with a Peugeot uh, 306 CC, I think it was called, and in 2009, it was already a nitrogen car, you know? And, and when I was talking to Dominic and, and on the phone and you, you I were talking, you. There's, there's, oh yeah, sorry. And there's, <laughs> there's way more actually synergy also between architecture, the built environment and the energy production. Maybe mm -hmm. you'd ship this in as well, uh, yeah, as far well, as uh, with concrete production and stuff. Right? Yes, uh, it, uh, uh, one of the proposals we've already made here was to build these 125 megawatt platforms here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, we've run that by a uh, former governor and uh, uh, talked to the local unions and everything. And what we would do was uh, build a dry dock area in, uh, uh, in the Barbers Point Harbor mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, use uh, the ash from the yeah. local yeah, yeah. Uh, power plant the uh, coal power plant and uh, uh, do the actual concrete mix awesome. that is so beneficial awesome. that Al Yee put together yeah. uh, and uh, have uh, permanent jobs for 600 people and uh, uh, awesome. be the source of energy, yeah. uh, export energy here, wow, but be self-sufficient. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this uh, no longer need, for instance, yeah, yeah. the Red Hill tanks. There uh, you go. Be able to do transportation fuel using hydrogen, uh, which we already have. You yeah. can go out and buy a Toyota. Perfect. Uh, you know. So we were uh, anyway. talking buying Toyotas. Next slide. We need to wrap, uh, wrap up here. This would be the projects that would come out of that, inspired and new and refreshing. Next slide is basically, we said the oil industry is, the technicians you said are open, but the business people not. So I think we need yes. to reach out to maybe more philanthropic people who know the islands well. Bruno Mars, The Rock, Warren Buffett we hear has a place up at the Gold Coast, um, or a former President Barack Obama. And there then uh, last slide here is then to do environments like that. I'm going to run a studio uh, about the rejuvenation of Waikiki, and I look much forward uh, to have you there to share with the emerging generation that actually many more ideas you have around that. That was sure. just an appetizer and we agreed to do many more shows together. So that being said, we look forward to that. Thank you, Hans, for the appetizer. <laughs> that was super sure. yummy. And uh, so see you all actually then next year because this is the last human architecture this year. And so happy holidays. Uh, and until then, please stay as Da Vinci tropic hearing as Hans. Bye-bye. Yeah.